What's going on, Dark Avenger Nation, and welcome back to another episode of the Dark Avenger Comic Book Review, the show where each and every episode I share my thoughts on books I read in the previous week. This episode, we're talking about books that were released on July 15th, 2020. Now, this is going to be a little different this week. As you all know, I'm always ever testing. We have 14 books to talk about and things have been a bit hectic i would like to just really quickly mention keep an eye out on shootingstaruniverse.com i am going to be talking about a few things that actually are involved with this channel right here so stay tuned for more on shootingstaruniverse.com and if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter subscribe second newsletter went out last week and next week there's going to be some really cool celestial falcon stuff being dropped so stay tuned for more with that being said, let's get into this week's books. Red Border, issue number three. We're going to start with this. My lower favorite book, and I'm going to, you're going to notice a trend with some of these books, but I kind of predicted where this book was going. I knew that they were going to try to escape. The family, obviously, they found out that the room that the family was using people as trophies, people that they helped cross the border, if you get my drift. So they try to escape. And there was one part of the book I didn't see coming. I didn't see coming the friend they made on the other side of the border actually was working with that family. The family finds out that they know, obviously, and they chase after them. One of them gets away. I won't spoil whom. The other one doesn't. And now it's going to become like a rescue mission. It's going to be interesting. And then also the person they ran from is now on the other side of the border and in America really interested in seeing it looks like doom and gloom for this family that's all i'm gonna say here really good book again a little bit predictable but i'm still enjoying it artwork is still really good actually let me just stop and say artwork in all the books i'm about to talk about really good i will point out some things as i get into different books of course but all the books really amazing artwork but that was Red Border. I did enjoy it looking forward to the next issue year zero number three this book is contending <laughs> it, it, it's there. It's actually probably number one on my favorite AWA books. We continue stories. We continue BJ's story. We continue the story of the man in Tokyo. We continue the story with the woman's group uh, all surviving in different places. And then there's a little boy who's surviving in, I think it's Mexico. I can't remember. There were so many different places. We go all over the place. And as a matter of fact, in the beginning of the book, we get a little bit of the origin possibly of the virus and what caused everything but we get more of each of their stories i really like the man from tokyo story whose father was in trouble with the yakuza he has talent and it's really cool i really enjoy him the women in i want to say I'm, I'm gonna feel silly later but they're in one of the arabic countries i do not remember which one though but they're looking for information on what's going on the boy is looking for weapons for these people he's working for and then bj finally meets a friend and it's a woman and now, here's where the fun begins. I'm skipping all the middle and going to go right to the end now. The book always ends with BJ for some reason. This issue ends with him talking with her, and she's trying to convince him she's only 20 miles away. Why doesn't he come either get her, or why don't they get together? I think he's going to go to her and stay, because it looked like that's how he was packing, was he was going to survive with her. My prediction here is there's something more going on possibly i think that bj is going to be in for a, a little bit of a surprise when he gets there i think it's a trick kind of looks that way i could be wrong i'm really interested to see what happens next i hope poor bj he doesn't get i like bj he's like one of us and he gets into this i don't know i just i just feel like he's being tricked i feel bad i really do if he is hopefully i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong and i'm hoping i'm wrong but um, all the stories in this book have been really, really good. And I'm invested in every single one of the characters that we're seeing as the book develops. Definitely a book. If you like zombies, if you're a fan of zombies, this is definitely a book you will want to check out. Faithless issue number two. Oh, boy. <laughs> so Faith re reunites with her girlfriend. Her girlfriend comes. They talk about the artwork. They have some time. And then we get a character from the first volume that reappears. And it turns out in the first volume, you kind of thought that there was some type of a connection with her and all that's going on. This homeless woman. Turns out there might be a really deep connection here. And really, this was just a lot of talking. In this issue, it was a lot of her spending time with her girlfriend. You get a little bit of the father. And then there's this really... Twi deep twist at the very end of the book 
And I feel bad for Poppy. Every series so far, she's fainted at least once. And in this issue, she actually fainted at the end of the book. But it's a lot of talking in this issue. It was a lot of just her spending time with her girlfriend, like I said, and talking about, you know, her other roommate. But all three of them, this is a very mature book. Let me stop right here and say this is a very mature book. This is definitely for readers 18 and older. While there are con there is content in this book that I'm sure are younger than 18 can read, this is definitely one of those books that's 18 and older. It's very mature. It's a nice read. I find this more of one of my casual reads, but I've been talking about Faithless for so long. I throw Faithless in the review uh, every time because I read it before I do my review. Deceased Hope at World's End, issue number five. This is a digital only series for now. Who knows if it might be printed in um, physical form at some point. Damien, his first act as Batman <laughs> is to steal Wonder Woman's invisible jet because he wants to find his mother, Talia. She, he knows she's alive and he knows she's in Gotham. So he steals the invisible jet to find his mother and they find his mother and then they end up traversing to the Batcave. And here's the link between Hope at World's End and the segue series, the three-part segue series with Red Hood. This is after Jason leaves the Batcave and buries Batman, uh, Robin, and Nightwing because Talia sees the headstones. And it's it's really cool. I love how they, they connected it. They connected it to the Segway series. And it's really cool because now you have like that fluidity a bit to it. But yes, it's been like, it's definite now that they are gone. This was a really, really good issue. I really enjoyed it. I, I'm, I'm deceased for some reason. Is just one of those books where it takes a lot for me to enjoy a zombie book in the main two, the big two uh, companies. This got me. This Deceased, uh, Tom Taylor has been doing amazing with Deceased. And this just, it keeps getting better and better. I'm really looking forward uh, to the next issue. This was great. This is amazing. Seeing, oh, also... Uh, I know Kat's going to be very happy that uh, Damien does get a Robin in this book, and I won't spoil whom, because I don't see her in Volume 2. So the question is, will she survive Hope at World's End, or will maybe she goes off and does something different? I don't know, but it's going to be interesting to see uh, how this Robin, if this Robin survives. But it was a previous Robin, that's all I'm going to say. Read this issue, it was really, really, well, this digital chapter. It was really, really good. Spider-Woman issue two. I've been waiting for this book forever. I love the first issue. And we find out in this issue why Jessica is getting sick. And basically she's dying. Because the doctor from the first issue that she was helping, you know, to guard her daughter or his daughter. Yeah, he gave her a shot because he wanted to figure out a cure for his daughter. So he cured one of the things that Jessica had, which was her regenerative power which is what was put in her and keeping her alive with all the other radioactive powers inside of her body so now she's dying because he turned off her healing factor so to speak and yet things are not going well for jessica so now she has to find not a cure but she has to find a way to get her regenerative abilities back don't forget also the story with the, the suit if you didn't if you don't know what i'm talking about read issue number one that doesn't get mentioned here, but at the same time, remember that because I have a feeling it'll play into something later on. And then, of course, you know, he gives her, you know, you could look this up. I'm not going to say what this is. I know what it is. I remember, but I'm not going to say it here. So she goes on a mission to find it and ends up coming face to face with a daughter to one of her previous. See, I, I feel like if I tell you who it is, then you're going to figure out what it is. But he, she comes face to face with a family member of somebody from her past. They end up in a fight. She almost loses what she what she was going to get. She might have gotten it, but it looks like she might have gotten really hurt in getting it, possibly. I don't know. Uh, the issue kind of leaves you wondering what happens next. Always love reading Spider-Woman. Spider-Woman is a really good series so far. I know it's only two issues in. I know I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I mean, it can go either way at this point. We should have been at issue four at this point. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see where Spider-Woman goes, but this was a really good, solid issue for Spider-Woman. Amazing Spider-Man issue number 44. This is a dream issue. But it's so good because Kindred finally enters Peter's mind and he puts Peter, he gives all this information at the beginning and then Peter 
wakes up or so he thinks he wakes up and i want to point one thing out that i'm sure a lot of people will be happy about he was holding a ring in his hand talking to mary jane so the possibility of a possible re-engagement might be happening i don't know all i do know is that the person who didn't want peter parker and mary jane married is no longer the head of marvel so we could be seeing finally the reuniting of mary jane and peter parker as husband and wife which would be great very happy about that. It'd be nice to see that now Peter will be, you know, it'll be in the main uh, Marvel Universe again. And also, will there be a Mephisto story undoing One More Day? That'd be great. I mean, hey, if DC Comics can do it with Superman, Marvel can do something similar, breaking Mephisto's contract and fixing everything with Spider-Man. They can do it, and I'm hoping they do do it. But this was a really great issue, and it ends with... Spider-Man in a dream of another dream, but the Spider-Man family might also be involved because at the last page we see everyone, everyone, including Madam Web, which we haven't seen Madam Web in quite some time. So I'm very interested in seeing what does the Kindred have in mind for the Spider family? We'll have to wait and find out. But finally, it only took 33 issues, or I'm sorry, 44 issues, but we're there. Immortal Hulk 35. The one thing I loved about this book was the internal, the mindscape with Bruce Banner talking with Hulk and about all the stages of first wanting to cure Hulk, then wanting to bury Hulk and take over, you know, have all the power, but not allow Hulk to be Hulk. Basically, Bruce was Hulk. And I love how Hulk kind of says, you know, first you want to cure, then you wanted to just have my power, but lock me away. And it's really cool. And I love that dynamic. And I feel like by the end of Immortal Hulk, we might actually get the Hulk back because I think Bruce is finally seeing, oh crap. Yeah, I am locking you away. And he realized, he says, it's going to be different this time. We'll see. And um, apparently Devil Hulk is still locked up and we don't know why. And Bruce and Hulk are now trying to unlock that but hulk saved the day you know he saved the world so you know he's being seen as a hero again he's talking against the avengers because they tried to kill well he didn't say kill he tried they he, they tried to hurt him and everything's going great until the very end of the issue and now you all know that rick is being controlled by the leader leader does something to hulk and for those of you that have been reading this series something happens at the very end of this issue that is very much like i mean again this is like a horror book it felt very much not like a horror book up until we got to that last page, which I'm not going to spoil. I'm not going to do it. You need to read Hulk, uh, Immortal Hulk. This has been a great series. I really, truly have to get those two hardcovers. I talked about it the last time I talked about Immortal Hulk. It's a really great series. I'm very happy that I'm caught up with it and I'm reading it. It's a fun, really great, dark read with the Hulk. And it's definitely something I think everyone should try. Nightwing 72, just like Red Border. I called it. I knew it. So Barbara hears from Dick's girlfriend, from Nightwing's girlfriend. She tells Barbara that something happened, the Joker was here, and now she can't find Dick. From Dick's girlfriend, from Nightwing's girlfriend. She tells Barbara that something happened, the Joker was here, and now she can't find Dick. <laughs> I give up. Okay. <laughs> can't find Dick. So Barbara shows up. And it turns out, all of a sudden, magically, Dick remembers everything. He remembers being Dick Grayson. He remembers being Nightwing and everything. But he's still in that old suit for some reason. And he's talking about the Joker. And then Punchline shows up. And this big fight breaks out. And just like I said, especially because the previews... See, this is why I don't read previews. But the reason I did was I think I read it because I wanted to make sure that the next issue... It was about COVID. It really it was involving about shipping. I never read descriptions when it comes to comics because I feel like they, they do give away what happens in an issue you didn't read yet. And in this issue it did because, um, yeah, it turns out Dick was just playing Barbara all along and now he's really with Punchline. He's Dicky Boy, as, as the end of the last issue said. And I guess next issue we're going to get into his mind and see what Joker changed. But basically he's on Punchline's side and now it's both of them going against Batgirl. And again, I say this was predictable only because of previews, and this is why I don't read previews. And if you don't want to be spoiled, I always say, look at what books are coming out. Try not to read too much of the previews because sometimes they spoil books that haven't even been released yet because previews is about two months in advance. So it's two books in advance or three books in advance. So it can spoil the outcome of books that haven't come out yet. 
leading up to that book. So just be aware if you read previews or if you buy previews. Just Sometimes they give away certain things, and in this case they did. But it was still a really great issue, and I, I did enjoy it. I just I saw it was coming because of the previews. Red Mother issue number six. Wow. At the end of the issue, that was just a wow. That was like a brain explosion. So she goes to Paris, and she's working for this man now. They're trying to break this puzzle, and they finally get past stage four. There's still seven more stages to go. Uh, but they get into the fourth lock, and they're talking. She's having a great time. Life is great. It's been weeks later. No more problems. And then out of nowhere, somebody shows up. And she's like, no, I killed you back there. You're not here anymore. And she runs off. End of the night, she's having a great time with her co-workers and friends. And she, she sees this guy who's a street artist. You know, she gives him her, I don't I forget what the website is, but it's basically like the equivalent of Facebook. And they're going to maybe meet up, maybe date, who knows. And then there she's on her way home with her friends and co-workers. I left out a bunch of stuff that happened in the middle on purpose. And I'm not, I, I, I'm debating, I'm going to give you a spoiler for this one, but I'll tell JD when to put spoiler alert up. So... She goes home and then she sees the shadow person again. But her friends see him too and tell him to get lost. And he gets lost. But now they're worried about her so they walk her home. And okay, now JD, it's a spoiler alert time. After she goes in, you know, she wishes everybody a good night. She promises she's going to bring coffee in the morning to a friend. She goes inside and the woman to the group of people says, for the red mother, see her. They're working for the red mother so her friends are wow that was the last page was just crazy and i had to share it here because that was amazing that was crazy didn't see it coming the whole issue then you get to that last page and boom they're not really what they seem wow that was some good writing red mother has been a real real enjoyment to read this was great this is a really great issue mighty Morphin power rangers issue 51 dragon's back new hairstyle and everything so Long story short, the Power Rangers, he was running from something. The Power Rangers capture him. He's now a captive. So now Zordon wants to send him back to his reality because he feels like it's an imbalance. He needs to go. Lord Zed also had a feeling he knew what that comet was. And he sends a monster that the Power Rangers defeat way too easily. Get back to that in a moment. So Draken... There's a moment with Draken and Billy where Billy's doing a scan because they're trying to figure out, you know, get his resonance so they could send him back to his time. And he's talking about, you know, don't you want to know what, you know, what's going on, why I'm here. I think Draken's losing his mind a little bit because he's talking to that broken Saba head that doesn't work at all anymore. So I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But Lord Zed's plan comes into fruition at the end of the issue. This I will not spoil. But it does involve, I will only say this, the green chaos crystal. So Lord Zed might have a green chaos crystal. And the return of another character, which we didn't really lose this character. But if you watch the TV show, this character was out of the series for a while. And now is being brought back in at the end of this issue. Very cool stuff. I, I love how... Aisha is trying to get Tommy, she's asking, aren't you going to go talk to Draken at all? And Tommy's like, no, because if I see him, I probably end up knocking him out. And I don't blame him. And there's some really cool character stuff sprinkled throughout the issue. I really liked it. Uh, this this was really good. This was a really great issue. I'm looking forward to seeing what, with Lord Zed, what he's doing, what's going on with Draken. Are we going back into the speed? Again, this is something with the grid. We know Ranger Slayer went home, so... I can't wait for her one shot, but then Draken's going to have a three-issue miniseries that led into issue 50, like him, what he was running from. And I feel like, obviously, if we're getting a three-issue miniseries, which is going to be kickstarted by the Ranger Slayer book, which comes out this month. So this month will be Ranger Slayer. Next month will be the first part to uh, Draken's story, which I think that means for the next three or four issues of Mighty Morphin, we're not going to get the full story because, obviously, they're going to want to tell... The backstory before we get to the actual reveal of what Draken was running from, what Ranger Slayer saw, you know what I mean? So uh, I feel like this is going to be something that's slowly going to build for the next couple of issues at least, while the miniseries kind of tell the backstory of Draken and, and Ranger Slayer. So I'm, I'm, I'm on board. I can't wait. I'm really excited, and I can't wait for more of those Chromium covers because they're one thing Boom Studios is doing really, really nice are the Power Ranger Chrome covers. 
I'm looking forward to Mega Man's first issue. Might get the second one if they do it. I love these covers. They look amazing, and if you display them, they look great as well. So I'm looking forward to what's coming next for, for Power Rangers. I'm looking forward to, uh, to um, Mega Man coming soon, actually, as well. Snake Eyes Dead Game, issue number one. I love how Rob Liefeld draws a wolf. JD, I'll, I'll send you the picture. You could share that on here. Man, <clears throat> that wolf looks so happy. <laughs> Otherwise, otherwise, other than that one piece of art, it was very good issue. Just a lot of, a lot of disposition, not even dialogue, internal dialogue. It's a lot of disposition on what Snake, who Snake Eyes is, what he's doing. His, the whole beginning of the book is reintroducing Snake Eyes for new readers, which I have to give Rob Liefeld credit on. It is a good thing because anyone who's coming into this book who has no clue who Snake Eyes is, no clue about anything about Snake Eyes, Rob totally gave it to you in this issue in detailed form oh boy took me a little bit to get through this issue so someone sends a message to gi joe and the message ends with and bring snake eyes so snake eyes shows up roadblocks there trip wires there they free the captive person this isn't a spoiler it's the original gi joe joe colton general colton joseph colton he talks about a specific thing that's connected with snake eyes i won't spoil that and we get introduced to who i believe I, again they're not saying if this is an ongoing or a mini maybe they did and i missed the memo i'm sorry but i have a feeling it's a mini because this is all about the dead game with snake eyes and he tells snake eyes about it and he goes off and he meets up with this person and he fights with them a little bit and it don't look good scarlet shows up which i really love that scarlet's in the book as well uh, for those of you that don't know who Scarlet is, that's this beautiful woman right here without the light shining on her. By the way, Hasbro's first wave of G.I. Joe figures has been released. So anybody who's interested, check out Hasbro Pulse. You can check out Entertainment Earth, Amazon. Figures are everywhere. Scarlet shows up and she's now part of this team. And of course, the bad guy gets away because what would this be if the bad guy was defeated in one issue? But I loved it. Oh, Rob Liefeld drew some beautiful snake eyes, though. I will say that. There were some panels that looked a little bit, like, sketchy. But for the most part, for the most part, he did an amazing job with snake eyes. Coming back for issue two, hopefully less dialogue. But we'll see. Uh, this was a great issue, though. Definitely something. If you're a G.I. Joe fan, get this book. Dark Knight's Death Metal issue number two. A lot of people are saying this is this is leading into, you know, this is another crisis, this is this, this is that. i just like to remind some people, I know a lot of people didn't know this, but this was originally supposed to be what led to DC 5G. Now we don't know if 5G is happening, isn't happening. I'm not surprised this anti-crisis that they were talking about in the first issue. It did not surprise me at all. This is somehow going to... This is affecting the DC Universe. By the time this is done, there are going to be ripple effects, I feel, in some of the books. Maybe. I don't know. Again, this all depends on if they're still going with 5G. They are. Then they're not. Then they are again. I feel like Wonder Woman is getting a lot of spotlight in Death Metal. And if you remember, originally in 5G, Wonder Woman, instead of Superman, was going to be the first superhero to make a public appearance. So, she's taking a huge spotlight in the beginning of this uh, arc with... Um, death metal. So Batman is trying to figure things out because Wonder Woman killed um, the Batman who laughs at the end of the last issue. And now Batman knew that something was going to happen. That that was just the first, you know, there was going to be a plan if, if he died. And there was. Spoiler alert. They put the Batman who laughs brain in Dr. Manhattan's body and he becomes something completely different by the end of this issue. But in the end, basically, now you have the Batman who laughs with powers that equal Doc that with Doctor Manhattan's powers, basically, and that's very dangerous in this dark world. What's her name shows up for a little bit. You've got the other team that are working on ways to save all the universes now, and Batman, basically having the power of the Black Lantern ring, is able to bring back the dead, and he's marking all these people that are dead. You get to see the Justice Society. Jay Garrick actually was in this issue, and you got like that three flash hug, Barry, Jay, and, and uh, Wally, which was really, really nice. A lot's going on, and then the issue ends with, if you all read Batman Superman way back before the New 52, and you saw that Batman Superman composite robot, yeah, they threw Wonder Woman in there now, so it's like a three-way mashup robot, 
and they're going to take it to the Batman who laughs now. There's some other stuff in between, but uh, that robot. Scott Snyder, can you throw it in our face anymore that Wonder Woman's really getting a um, a push in a Batman <laughs> miniseries? I mean, Wonder Woman's... But I gotta give Wonder Woman credit, though. She's trying to push the narrative, whereas Batman's hiding in a, in a cave. Wonder Woman wants to start doing something, you know, getting Batman to move again. My one question is, where's Superman? We have not seen Superman yet, and I'm starting to... I mean, he's been on covers. I'm starting to get a little concerned. Where is Superman? Where's the rest of the Justice League? Where are they? Hopefully, we'll get more revealed as Death Metal progresses. I don't remember how many issues Death Metal is, but we'll see. This is an interesting second issue. I'll be back for the third, of course. Death Metal's still going pretty strong. I'm just... I'm not as ecstatic as I was, like, in issue number one. I, I'm not as excited for where issue two went we'll see where issue three goes i'm still enjoying the series but i'm not feeling as much as i was during the first issue so again we'll have to wait and see where death metal issue three goes and where we go beyond that after death metal ends if things are still going to be happening i don't know dc comics right now out of all the comic companies out there right now i think dc comics really needs to uh, fix up a lot of things company and book wise because now they're in all different directions we got to start focusing again guys yeah let's start focusing again here we go you ready empire issue number one you had to read those zero issues i'm going to start it off with that you definitely did but it was good i did enjoy it yes i did i enjoyed it enough to say i will stick around for the main series and, of course, anything I'm reading that crosses over with it, I'll obviously be reading because it's crossing over with it. But, for the most part, I'm not going to be purposely going out of my way to read the miniseries. So, you know, you think it's Teddy. You think it's Hulkling and the Skrull and Kree army that are the bad guys here. I mean, that's what we're led to believe throughout this entire uh, beginning. And they're there to eliminate the people that the Avengers are with. I forget how to pronounce their name. I'm not even going to try. But they're there to eliminate them because they are the threat to the galaxy. And uh, the Fantastic Four are there and telling Hulkling, you know, they're manipulating you. You're just a figurehead, yada, yada. Same thing with the Avengers. They're trying to tell him the same thing. And there's a small hesitation. But then he says, no, we're still going to attack. And he makes up this huge plan or whatever. And we find out, we actually find out in the end spoiler alert jd you're gonna have to and then i'm gonna backtrack we find out in the end that hulkling and the kree scroll army are correct that this race actually is a threat to the galaxies because they want to not only destroy the kree and scroll but they want to destroy earth and all living beings as well so they trick the avengers so the avengers are, are find a way to stop this the, the kree and scroll ships and set them into kind of like a suspended animation and what happens is they're like, oh, thank you, Avengers. Now let's destroy everything. So you get that big twist at the end. And I love how, how um, Captain America look over, looks over to Iron Man and goes, Tony. He's like, I didn't know. I didn't see this coming. And insane. That was a twist. That's a good twist at the end of an of a event first part. Now I'm interested in seeing where this mini or where this event goes next. And... Already, members of the Fantastic Four might be stuck in the middle of uh, this whole attack with the Kree and Skrull army. Really awesome stuff. And last this week, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number 106. I was worried when 105 came out because the writer, Sophie Campbell, said, you know, uh, they told me to stop. And I'm glad that we got a continuation. So now... People, children especially, are going missing. And I have a feeling I know who's involved. Well, one of two people could be involved. Uh, but we'll get into my predictions in a moment. So children are going missing. And it, again, it's a lot of just the turtles are in life now. They're, they're running a dojo. They're helping people. So this mother comes in and says her child's missing. They say, we're going to figure it out. And then there's that little girl who gets yelled at by Leo, who's trying to teach a class. And she tells a story when she finds out that that child went missing about the slithery. And it's about this this uh, slithery monster that takes children away, locks them in cages, and then maybe eats them. She doesn't know. But that's the story that's being told from kid to kid to kid. 
And uh, these kids are making fun of her, and she's fighting with them during class. Leonardo yells at her. She runs away. And now Leo has to go find her and doesn't find her. And one thing I will say uh, with this book, art's fine. My one little issue is there are times where I get confused which turtle is which because they don't even have their... Like, I actually complimented that they had in the last issue all their headbands. If it's not a neckerchief, it's a headband. It's a, it's it's around there somewhere. It's always somewhere on the character. In this case, there were certain situations where they're sitting down at a table talking and all they have are shirts. And thank God Raphael wore red and Leo wore blue, but... Mikey wasn't wearing anything. Ra Donatello was wearing like a cyan-y color. It was hard to tell which turtle was which. And I'm sorry, but I didn't memorize turtle's eye color. Because apparently they they all have different eye colors. So you could have figured it out that way. Before anybody says anything. But have their headband somewhere on them. So I can understand who's talking with whom. Without having to analyze each picture. to In the beginning of a conversation. Because there were moments where I was like. So which turtle is this? Is this Leo? Is this Donnie? Is it who? So it was a little... At times, if, if names weren't said, I had to really look at the picture to figure out who it was. But otherwise, it was good. My prediction with the kids going missing is it's either the Mutanimals, because remember, they were taking kids away somewhere. So I'm wondering if this is like their new agent doing it, and then he's doing it on the sneak, or is it Baxter Stockman, who's still running for mayor... Or is mayor at this point. I don't know. But he's running for... He's in office. He's trying to get in office. And I'm wondering if he's trying to experiment on the children to find a cure for the mutant city now within um, Manhattan. I don't know. Those are my predictions. It's got to be one of those two. Be weird if it was something completely different. Unless it's it's a completely different entity. One person on its own. Then that's fine. But if it's somebody working for somebody else. My prediction is either the Mutanimals or... Or it is the, um, it's Baxter Stockman somehow. So really great issue. So the turtles go out and the little girl ends up getting captured. And we see in the last panel, the slithery, if that's really who it is. And, um, that's why I'm saying it's maybe he's a mutanimal. Maybe he's working for Baxter Stockman because the reason I wonder if it's Baxter Stockman is we get to see one of Baxter Stockman robots working with it. So it, or here's a, here's a third prediction. What if the Mutanimals are working for Baxter Stockman and it's all of them? I don't know. We'll have to wait and find out. But I'm really happy that Turtles are back. That Turtles, well, they never left. But I'm really happy that Turtles are continuing, I should say. And again, new artist or returning artist from Universe, D, from TMNT Universe. But the artwork still looks good great that's the only thing that i always worry about when it comes to new artists coming onto tmnt because we had that one arc the second arc of the series that i the artwork left me wanting more so far after that and since everything's been great so i'm really happy that the artwork's so great hopefully sophie campbell will do more i really did like sophie campbell's expressions and stuff when it came to tmnt so hopefully we'll get more of that in the future this is a great issue, one of my favorites. Again, as I always say, if you haven't read a single issue of TMNT yet, go find the hardcovers worth every penny. Love TMNT and recommend it the highest. One of my number one favorite books out of every company. So if you haven't read TMNT yet, definitely check out TMNT. And with that, that's it for this week's review. I hope everybody had a wonderful week. We'll be back soon with more content as always. But with the end of every review, must come the outro. Pikachu! Hey, did you enjoy that video? If you're new, consider clicking that subscribe button for more. Also, click that notification bell to be notified when live streams and videos are posted. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Come over to Facebook.com and join the Dark Avenger Nation to continue the conversation beyond YouTube. Don't forget to check out my website, ShootingStarUniverse.com, for all the content I do across the web. And for anything else, check the links in the description below. And as always, take care, keep reading, keep collecting, and I'll see you really soon in the next one.